Who in here is ready for Christmas? Who in here is ready for the, who in here got their gifts already? You guys already opened all your gifts. Yeah, I, look, at, I opened my gifts two days ago. You know what I'm saying? I was looking at them like, nah, let me just open this up, you know? Yeah, so all right. I, I, I was tempted to say, man, I can't wait till Christmas is over. But well, you know what I'm starting to see, though? Preparing for the day is part of the battle. It's part of the thing. It's part of getting ready for Christmas. And it's like, hold on, God, I'm so busy. Hold on, today and the next day, I'm really going to make it about you. I'm going to reflect. I'm going to make it about family. I'm going to make it about your people. I'm going to make it about the people that you died for. And I'm also going to make it about you. So putting Jesus back into Christmas, and there's some reasons for this. But um, I want to pray real quick before we get started. And I'm, I'm trying to, they told me, is that, Joe, you want to be at least, you want this to be a, a short and sweet service? So that's what I'm going to try to do, short and sweet, okay? I'm not trying to make it 30, 45 minutes. I'm just going to really going to make it 15, maybe 20 minutes. And I'm going to get some hot chocolate and, you know, and, and eat a couple cookies. Yeah. See my fingers get fat, you know, after the sodium and stuff. And All right. Lord Jesus, we came here for you. This is to celebrate your birth. Happy birthday, Jesus Christ. This is the day, uh, and tomorrow are the days that we chose as, a, as, as, as the world. We chose that to celebrate your birth. We don't know exactly when you were born, but we know it's kind of around this time. Happy birthday, Jesus. We love you. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross, and, and help us to put, this, uh, put you uh, in this season, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, you guys may take a seat. Amen. <clears throat> all right so reasons for christmas and i believe there's many reasons for for christmas there's a bunch of reasons but i'm going to give you a couple of uh, reasons in my opinion for christmas why this was all about you know what i'm saying why this happened why this is all about okay uh the first one is the most obvious there needed an answer for sin. There needed to be an answer for sin. When sin entered the world, it was unanswerable. Nobody can actually take care of this. See, sin is, is simply defined like this, knowing the right thing to do and not doing it. I never knew what sin was. Uh, even go, I went to church for a couple years before I came into the ministry, and I didn't even know what sin was. They say, repent of your sins, get your sins right with God, and I didn't know what that was. That's like foreign language to me. That's like you speaking Chinese to me. I didn't know what that meant. But then when they broke it down, sin, you know the right thing to do and you don't do it, that's sin. The second part of it, right, and this is James 4, 17, it says to know God's law and to break it. That's sin. You know what God says, and you're just not going to do it. You're just going to break it. That's sin, okay? But what happens is sin has a goal. Sin is like a person. It has a goal. And sin's job is to separate you from Jesus Christ. It's to separate you from God. It's to push you away from God. You could be doing good, and then you sin for a week, and you feel far away from him. You don't feel him. You don't hear him. It's like you're offbeat. I, I, would remember, I remember being in ministry, and I'm, I'm a young minister, young in ministry, and I remember I'll be, in, I'll be on fire for God, and then I'll do one week of sin, and I feel like disconnected. I'm not flowing with my pastor. I'm not flowing with the people. My words are falling on the ground. I'm talking to people, and they don't like, uh, uh, you don't know nothing. They don't even understand what I'm saying. Why? Because sin separates you. It throws you off. It's like you're in a boxing ring, and you get hit in the nose. You're going to get stung a little bit. What happens is when you shake that sin off, you get your focus back and you get your strength back. But sin is job is to separate us from God. It, sin hates when we get close to God. That's why your flesh and your heart, it fights. It fights because it wants to, our, 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 we're like a sin magnet. We want to sin, right? And the moment that, that when Jesus comes and the moment that we actually say, you know what? You start to snap out of it. You learn how to fight it, okay? But sin's job is to separate you from God. It hates you getting close to God. Here's a scripture. I'm going to use that to back this up. Isaiah 59, verse 2. Look what it says. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. You know what iniquity is? It's habitual sin. It's things, wrong things that I do habitually. That separates us from God, right? Check this out. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. 
That's tough right there. Its whole design is to keep us away from God. And if a person has not dealt with their sin problem or have, they have not gotten with God about their sin problem or asked for forgiveness or even help, God help me get out of this, or even realized they have a sin problem, by not addressing it with God, that sends us to hell. By not addressing it with God. I'm talking about if you address sin by yourself, you're halfway there, but you're not there yet. Now you say, dang, I got a problem. Let me address it with God. Now you're there. But what happens is if you, we never have done this, that sends us to hell. That's a tough thing. Check this out. Sinners don't go to hell. Unforgiven sinners go to hell. Forgiven sinners go to heaven. I'm a sinner. The only difference, God forgive me. That's the, the only difference. I am no better than you. You are no better than me. The only thing that makes us different from the world, God forgive me. That's it. That's the only difference. Black and white, it's the only difference. All of us are sinners. The only thing that matters and what makes us different is that we are forgiven by Jesus Christ and we are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only difference. And if we never realize that we have a sin problem or gotten with God about it or never, you know, and never asked him to help us with this, what happens is God never entered our life. One more time. If I had never gotten with God about our sin problem, and he never asked him for help, right, never said, God, help me, God does not live here. The first requirement, we got to ask Jesus to forgive us. That's the first requirement to get saved. Sin was created in the heart of the devil. We didn't create it. A, 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 a heavenly being created sin. That's how bad it is. Only the devil could come up with this concept. It was created in the heart of the, the devil, right? This is what got him kicked out of heaven. This was the thing that got him kicked out. And uh, what can you do to get kicked out of heaven? He's a perfect being. He's an angelic form. The devil is so like, he was so powerful. He had, uh, he had, uh, there's, there's five positions of angels. I believe he had two of the five. That's how powerful he was. He was a sheriff. That means he covered. He, he, he was in authority. When they talked about meetings in heaven, he was there. And how can, how messed up can you actually, and you're in a perfect place where you can't mess up. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to invent it. <laughs> you're in a place where you can't mess up. So he's like, you know what? Let me, let me invent this. <laughs> That's how bad it is. And check this out. He willfully went against God and he sinned. No one knew sin. No one even knew what that was. Until the devil created it. Okay, Genesis 3 verse 1. And it sounds like a Christmas message. It's going to get there, okay? It's going to get there. It's like, oh, Merry Christmas, Jesus. All right. But it's going to get there. Check this out. It's going to get there. Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. The serpent is the devil, okay? What happened was the devil entered the serpent's body, used the serpent's body, and started, you know, talking, okay? And that's what he does today. He enters a human body and just starts talking. Okay, never, he's, yeah, okay never, never, that's another Bible study. I'm just, that's extra, okay? And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? See, being crafty, he came up with a plan to get Adam to eat the fruit that God commanded him not to eat. God said, listen, there's only one thing I want from you, create the perfect paradise on earth. Just don't eat from this fruit. And then the devil comes. Are you sure that he told you you can't eat from any fruit? Okay. This was his plan. Because if the devil can get him for eat, to eat the tree that God commanded him not to eat, Sin will enter the world because it wasn't here. Long story short, sin did enter the world and Adam did eat that fruit. He disobeyed what was going to keep earth in peace. 
He disobeyed was what was going to keep earth a paradise. Do you know that when, Je- when God made Adam, do you know there was, it, it was tropical? There wasn't four seasons. You know the four seasons came after Noah entered the ark? When it flooded, that's where we get the four seasons. That, that, that rain all over the earth, that messed up the whole world. That messed up our climate. Hurricanes and, and tornadoes and all this stuff. That the hurricane, how come God caused a hurricane? No, sin caused a hurricane. Our great 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 granddaddy Adam ushered that in. We didn't we can't blame that on God. That was Adam's fault. And check this out. That's our great granddaddy daddy. Everybody, Adam and Eve, our great grandparents. And check this out. So not only did the, the, the he disobey what was going to keep the earth in peace, what was going to make it a paradise, sin ruined the world. It had a complete hold on the earth and everyone in it. Everyone's destiny was hell. You lived, and after you're done living, you're going to end up in the lake of fire forever and ever. And when God looked at, looked at us and when God started communicating with man in the back of his mind, he's like, dang, their, their end is going to be torture unless I do something about it. He's talking, communicating, loving, but he says, Dandre, they're still going to end up in hell. They're still going to end up there. So you know what happens? There was a movie I saw, and uh, at the end of the movie, the lady told, asked the guy, what would you change if you knew the future? And the guy was like, you know what? I would say what I feel. And you know what I believe? That God asked himself the same question. If I make man and they mess up and sin does enter, what will I do? Because no one had enough in them or the ability to solve this sin problem once it entered the world. Because someone had to pay for sin. It was going, it was not just going to go away. Someone had to pay for it and it had to be perfect. It couldn't be a sinful person paying for sin. It had to be a perfect person to pay for this sin problem, this messed up thing. Perfect for messed up. It had to even out. It had to balance out. So you know what happened? God had it in his heart to answer the problem. He said, you know what? They created the problem, but I'm going to have to answer it. So what happens is God loves us so much. God not only made us, he knew the mistake we were going to make and then solved our problem also. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, a perfect man, a perfect sacrifice born to us and for us. Let me, let's go to Luke right quick where he's actually born, where he entered the world, where the plan comes together. Okay, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 16. In the same region, there were some shepherds standing out in the fields, and they were keeping watch over the flock by night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for I come, for I bring good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. See, the Savior from our sins, he was like, the Savior means he's going to save us from our sins, that he's going to be the one to save you. Not only that, he's the Christ. He's going to take you to heaven. This is the one they prophesied about. This is the one that all these prophets come to write all these prophecies down. He's the one going to fulfill it, right? He's the one going to take us to heaven, and he's the Lord. That means he's the master. He's the one that's going to call the shots. He's going to want to be the direct, direct you. He's going to guide you. He's going to whisper to you. He's going to want to tell you what to do, what not to do, what to watch out for. He's Lord. He's master. He's the one that's going to call the shots. Now he's going to be your savior. He's going to be your Lord, All right? Verse 12, but this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in the manger. You know what happens? Great things can come in unexpected places. It doesn't matter how dirty it is, how messed up it is, how not all put together. If Jesus is there, that makes the difference. And Jesus can be in a small form, but a great package. It can be a small thing. It can be like, damn, I just get a baby Jesus. But God, he said, that's enough. That's going to be enough to save your life. It sounds like the home. I come to a crazy place. I didn't know. When I, look, at, when, when she sent my wife, 
He's like, you don't even know. I, you don't even know she was a drug addict. Do you know how bad? You know how bad she was. She was shooting drugs, shooting in her vein. It wasn't just smoking. It was like in her neck and everything. Little eyeball. No, nah, 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 that, that was going too far. I'm just joking. But it was going, I mean, I heard stories, but you can't even tell after God gets done with them. You could probably look at me and say, yeah, I can tell you are a drug addict. Okay, you could probably, but not her. I get that all the time. Like, it, 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 look, I just the other day, the plumber. Look, we're expected to be here in January. I'm telling you this right now. The men's home is going to be here. We're expected to be here maybe in the middle of January. You know, hey, we're, we're, we're on one right here. We're on some. Okay, check this out. I talk to the plumber, right? I meet him at Menards to get to supplies and stuff, right? And uh, I recognize the other plumber, but not the, uh, the uh, one plumber, but not the other. So I walk up to him, and he said, like, yeah, uh, I say, hey, what's up? Oh, hey, how you doing, sir? All right. Uh, he's, uh, you guys ready? He's, oh, I say, yeah, well, for what? I said, well, I'm the pastor. I'm the one behind him. Oh, you're a pastor? And he said, man, you just look like a regular guy. I said, what am I supposed to look like? Some, you know what I'm saying? Like, what am I supposed to look? But, you, but here's the thing. I don't look like, because I look a little younger. You get what I'm saying? I look a little younger. Okay? I get it. I get it. I understand. You can get great things in unexpected places. Okay? Not only that, I'll give you a last one. This little principle. I was going to throw it in there, but I, I, this one's for free. Sometimes the biggest blessing is wrapped in the wrong package. It's wrapped wrong. What God wants to give you is like, no, nah, it's supposed to be beautiful and elegant. He said, no, nah, I wrapped it up in newspaper. Here, here you go. But what's inside that package? Verse 13, and suddenly there appeared with them angels of multitude and the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God, God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest and and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased look at peace among men with whom he is pleased do you know this it was pleasing to god for the, for for he said for this for him to be born like this it pleased him it doesn't matter your background it doesn't matter how messed up you are man if jesus didn't die like that but he began like that, small, unlikely places. Jesus, you know what, what pleased God? Jesus is the one, he's like, you know what's going to please me? He's the one that's going to be able to pull this off to get mankind back to heaven. He's going to be the one to actually save these people, a savior. It pleased God. He's like, he's the one that's going to please me. Verse 15 when the angels had gone away from, from them into heaven, the shepherds began to say to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that had happened, which the Lord had made known to us. So they came in in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. Whew. Check this out. Ver, ver, the last point is God decided to use his birth as a celebration this was God's idea Christmas was God's idea God put it in someone's heart to celebrate his birth and it caught wildfire every time we celebrate Christmas it's a form of taking the Lord's Supper we confess him to be Lord right we remember that he died for us on the cross and we remember that he saved our life a time to get together exchange gifts even remember Christ Jesus has the same trait as his father. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know what? Jesus uses his birth to give gifts to everyone. He uses his birth to give gifts to everyone else so, so, so we can get together. Most of the businesses are closed. And the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus as Lord. And check this out. On Christmas, everybody's going to celebrate it. It's crazy. The whole world celebrates it. See, when people are off of work for Christmas, this is a form of confessing that he's Lord and Savior and celebrating his birth. Every time you go to a store and you get something on discount, you're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Every time. Every time you bought the discount, you went, you went, who in here got a discount because of Christmas? 
The 20% of not nothing? You just celebrated Jesus' birth. You just celebrated it. Yeah, but check this out. I know, and, and it's, it, yeah, it's cool. It's like, yeah, uh, I want to end it with this, okay, because I was going to go further, but I told my wife. My wife told me 15, 20 minutes, so I'm going to stick to it. I think I'm doing good, right? I think I am. She doesn't even want to look at me now. Okay, yes or no? Okay. <laughs> I want to end it here, okay? And as we shut, shut off the lights real quick, as we shut off the lights, God put a star in heaven so it can get our attention to follow it so we can get to him. And today, I want to put a light and ask God to come follow these lights and land on us, okay? And I want to ask you guys to take out your phones, okay, and put the light on real quick. And I'll start with me. Look at this. Just put your light on and put it up in there. Just put it up in there.